Hi, I'm Yanis Rusos, the product manager of the database group, and I'd like to take you through what we're planning to achieve in GitLab 15.0, which is scheduled to be released on May 22nd of 2022. I'm also joined by my colleague uh, Sampath, the product manager of the Geo Group. Hey, Sampath, and thank you for joining me. Hi, Yanis. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be part of it. Okay, so before we continue, let me give you a very high level uh, overview of what we are doing on the database group. So our core mission is to build the application code, the tools and frameworks that allow every GitLab feature to interact with the database in the most reliable and performant way possible. We also build tools and product features that enable any GitLab team member to efficiently develop code again, that interacts with the database, test against uh, production grade data sets and make informed data-driven decisions before shipping any update to the GitLab product. So more or less, that's it. So let me start with our planning. It's GitLab 15.0. It's a new major release. We're always super excited at GitLab when we have a new major release. Of course, the work of the database group is behind the scenes. So as long as we are doing our work correctly, uh, all GitLab instances benefit from, what we, uh, from our updates without having to do anything. But before I start with our top priorities, let me tell you about the one thing that uh, uh, GitLab instance administrators must uh, be aware of. So in 15.0, we're deprecating Postgres 12. So we are going to keep supporting Postgres 12 as the minimum uh, version of Postgres for the whole 15, GitLab 15 cycle. But that means that in 16.0, next May, May of 2023, the minimum required version of Postgres uh, will be Postgres 13. We already, so you have one year to update your Postgres to Postgres 13 because it will be the minimum required version for GitLab 16. We already support Postgres 13 in GitLab. There are a few small uh, final changes, checks that we want to do. Mainly, we want to make sure that uh, to verify that the upgrade procedure for Geo installations works as expected. And then we can uh, officially say that we fully support uh, Postgres 13 for uh, GitLab 15.x. Uh, so this will happen early in the GitLab 15 cycle so that uh, instance administrators can upgrade to Postgres 13 as early as possible if they want. So let's go to our top priorities for 15.0. First of all, it's batch background migrations. So background migrations are the way that uh, we are executing very large updates in GitLab. So if you want to update a few thousands of records, uh, you can do so in line. So during a, an upgrade, during a, a migration, you can update them in a few seconds and you are done. But uh, when we want to update millions or even billions of records, we do so in the background by running background migrations. Those are asynchronous jobs that run in the background and update uh, perform the updates asynchronously without affecting uh, the GitLab instance. So everybody can keep on using uh, GitLab while the update uh, continues. And we have uh, done so in the past. We have extended the way Rails works with uh, data migrations. And now we are building a new uh, framework. We call it the batch background migrations, which more or less adds a lot of new features uh, towards availability or reliability of uh, those data operations, of those background migrations. So mainly what we are doing with this framework is that this is a framework that monitors uh, a production database cluster and dynamically adapts in real time to change, uh, changing conditions. That means that uh, we can see, for example, that uh, there is low traffic and what we can increase uh, how many uh, records we update per minute. We have seen, for example, gitlab.com migrations during, during very low traffic times to go up uh, and update up to a million records per minute. And in contrast, in contrary, if we see that there are there is a lot of traffic, we throttle it down. So instead of updating a million, we go to 500,000, 100,000, and down, down, down. It's also offers a lot of additional features uh, that are very important for both GitLab.com and self-managed instances, because it's a framework that self-monitors, sees if there are problems, finds failed jobs and retries them, 
breaks them to make them uh, easier to execute and much more. So in 15.0, our big target is our, the general availability of the framework. So we plan to release it in, internally so that other teams can start using it as the primary way of doing background migrations. We're going to deprecate the old way of doing uh, those migrations and work towards making, making it during the next milestones the only way of performing background migrations. Our second top priority is very closely related to, the, to what I just uh, discussed, is implementing a throttling mechanism for large data changes. So in this case, we are our worst enemy. So sometimes when we go too fast, one million records per, uh, per minute, for example, we can break things. So you can update as many records as you, as you want, but at some point you, you put too much stress to the database, to the production database. So we are adding a throttling mechanism, a generic throttling mechanism, and we are implementing it inside the auto-tuning layer of the batch background migrations, but it will be as a separate thing if we want it, that adds a lot of monitoring of the production cluster. So we are going to monitor everything we can and get early signals uh, that will warn us that something is not going well in the production. And I'm not talking about high traffic now, I'm not talking about incidents or something uh, uh, breaking or whatever. In those cases, we have seen that those very long, very large migrations can work against us because you have the incident, you have problems, and then you have uh, a background process trying to update uh, uh, records and things get worse and worse and worse. So in 15.0, we're going to add a few uh, very important signals. So first of all, uh, monitor for auto vacuum. Postgres, the way Postgres implements MVCC, the multi-version control, uh, concurrency control uh, in the database, which is in some other databases called the uh, multi-version snapshots or whatever. Uh, there is a need for Postgres to perform some uh, regular maintenance operations over the tables and indexes. So it's very fast, but it also has to go in the background and update those tables, rewrite the tables and do some things. This is called auto vacuum. And this is very important and can cause problems because when Postgres does so, if you're in a live system and you have insets and queries and you have auto vacuum fixing the table, and at the same time, you come with a background migration, start updating millions of records, that can cause problems. So the first thing for us is to monitor whether auto vacuum is running. And if it's running on a table, stop the migration, wait, and then restart. That will be a great uh, uh, step forward for reliability in GitLab. A second thing is monitoring the Patroni updates. Updates is the way we, uh, we monitor the health of the system in general as a, at the whole. So we monitor our updates is how, what percentage of queries are up, take more than 50 milliseconds with 100 milliseconds uh, as an acceptable uh, limit. So if we see that going below 99%, that means that something is happening. So normally in gitlab.com, uh, we, we have that at 99.9%. So 99.9% .9 of the queries executing less than 50 milliseconds. So if we see this going below 99%, that's a great signal that tells us, you know what, that production database has issues. <laughs> Stop the migration and wait. Another thing is throttle the migration, for example, when the right ahead log rate exceeds a threshold. As we know in the database world, the right ahead log is your database. So without the right ahead log, you don't have a, a real database. And this is a great also way to, as a signal, because all updates, all inserts, everything in a database go to the to, to wall, to the right ahead log. Oh my God, I'm not recording. Yanis, uh... you are recording. Ah, I'm recording. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse yeah. me for this pause. <laughs> I thought that I was not recording. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me for this. 
interruption and I'm going to continue. <laughs> it will be a mess. Yep. So the, the final thing is that uh, if we see, so the wall rate, the right ahead log rate is a great signal to, to, to see how many updates do we have in the database. This is the easiest way to, to see it and we, we track that. So if we see that going above a, a, a threshold, that means that even if we don't know it yet, as an early indicator, we know that the database is stressed out. So, uh, so we know that if we see the right ahead log rate going above that threshold, uh, we, we can throttle down the migration so that we, we release some pressure from the database, uh, from the database cluster. It's, we are not going to stop, but it's an early indicator. Let's back off a little bit and, uh, and let the, the system breathe. <laughs> Finally, uh, another thing that we're working on is pausing the migration when the right ahead log queue that is pending archival uh, crosses the threshold. That means that a lot of logs have uh, gathered, a lot of log segments uh, have not been archived. This is very important. That means that something is not working, maybe in the archive process, or you have too many logs. If you see that going above a threshold, this is a, an availability uh, risk. So we will pause the migration. And uh, our final <laughs> top priority is the automated database testing. So we have uh, added a, a new feature. This is internal at the moment. And we allow all GitLab engineers to test against a production, uh, a clone of the production uh, database of GitLab.com. This is amazing. So what we have managed to do at the moment is that all database updates Whenever a, a GitLab engineer has an update for the database, inside the merge request, we run a pipeline that tests that update directly against the production uh, server, a clone of the production server, of course. But it's, it's, it's a great feature for us because we can preemptively find difficult uh, to test problems because we test all updates against a, a snapshot of the database, a clone, uh, that has that it's no more than a few hours back. So we have done, we have completed our support for regular migration, post migrations, and now we are adding support for background migrations. And in 15.0, our major uh, initiative is to add support also for batch background migrations that we were talking uh, uh, before. So that's it. Sorry for uh, the small <laughs> interaction. And uh, thank you for watching and uh, talk to you uh, next month.